Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, what we're going to do is cover some hardware commands, some commands that we could use on the Linux command line to inspect the hardware of our instance. But wait a minute, I thought this was a cloud server, so why are we even focusing on hardware at all? Well, that's a good point. However, you still might be curious about the underlying processor and how that's been configured, as well as some other things that might be present within your instance, that information might be useful. And some of these commands, such as the lsblk command, will give you information about block storage devices. Anyway, what I'm going to do is give you some examples of several hardware related commands. And some of these will translate directly into your cloud environment. Others might just be good to know in general. Either way, let's just jump right into these commands. I can't wait to get started. So let's just dive right in. And thankfully, these commands are not difficult to learn. And to make it even easier, what I'll do is go over the basic usage of each of these commands, because the basic usage is all you'll need in order to inspect hardware that's inside your computer or server. And the first of the commands that I'll go over in this video is the lsusb command. And as you can see, this command gives us a list of USB devices, just like the name suggests. So there's a lot of information right here that could be useful to you. For example, if you have a USB device that you want to use with your Linux installation, and let's just say it's not working correctly, what you could do is find the output of that USB device right here from this command, copy the entire line that pertains to that device, and then paste it into Google along with the word Ubuntu or Linux or something like that, and you'll most likely find exactly how to get that piece of hardware working. In fact, for almost the entirety of my Linux career, this is exactly how I do it. But another thing that you might want to do is find out if your USB device is even detected in the first place. And this is a great command to use for that. In order to make it even more fun, what I'll do is combine the lsusb command with the watch command. Now I have an entire video in this series that covers the watch command, so I won't give you a ton of detail about that command in this video. If you want to learn more about the watch command, you could watch that video. But a basic summary of what it does is by default, it'll run the same command every two seconds. And to make this example even better, I added the dash D option. And what that does is highlight differences. So it'll be very obvious when I plug in a USB flash drive where the difference is, you'll see that right away. Anyway, what I'll do is plug in a flash drive right now and pay attention to the output. You'll immediately see what's different. And what you can see here is that the third line down is the flash drive that I've just inserted. Now the dash D option, like I mentioned, will show you all the differences. And it showed more than just that one line because that one line actually caused everything below it to shift down. But the point is here that we see the flash drive right here with the lsusb command. Even without the dash D option, it's still going to do the same thing. It lists USB devices like you can see right here. But by using the watch command, I can immediately see when a device is on the bus. And the third line down, the Kingston flash drive that I've just plugged in, well, it's available, it's on the bus, and I can now use it. If I remove it, then the line goes away. Anyway, the lsusb command is a great way to find out which USB devices have been detected by your system. And you've just seen what happens when I plug in a flash drive. It shows it immediately when I use the watch command combined with lsusb. And just like with most commands on the Linux command line, there's a few options that you could use with the lsusb command as well. But those options have more to do with printing information from a specific bus. Most of the time, unless you are writing device rules of your own, it won't be common for you to need something like that. But there is one option that's definitely really useful that I'll give you right now, and that is the dash t option. So if I run lsusb and then dash t, let's see what happens. And I really love this. The dash T option gives you information on your USB devices just like before, but it displays the information in a tree view. And in my opinion, this makes it easier to understand how everything is interconnected. Next, let's move on to the lspci command. And just like the lsusb command, I think it has a very clever and easy to understand name. We know ls from the ls command. That's how we list storage on the Linux command line. So we could already guess that ls means to list something. And when it comes to PCI, I think that's fairly self-explanatory. That's your PCI bus. And as you can see here, we get all kinds of information regarding devices on our PCI bus. From the output here, you're actually going to see quite a bit of detail regarding the computer that I use for recording footage on this channel. You can see, for example, that I have an NVIDIA GPU. 
You see that right in the output. And as I scroll up, we have even more information. So as you can see, if you wanted information about devices on your PCI bus, then the lspci command is a great command to use to get that information. As for some of the reasons why you might need a command like this, again, Linux compatibility is a very common reason. For example, if you want to understand whether or not a particular device works with Linux, you could copy a line from the output here, paste it into Google with the search terms Ubuntu, Linux, or whatever distribution you're using, and you'll probably find out information when it comes to how to get that device working. In the case of NVIDIA, you'll probably find information regarding installing the proprietary NVIDIA driver. That's often required when it comes to NVIDIA GPUs. Now, most of the time, almost everything on your computer will be supported out of the box, but it's not uncommon to have that one device that needs a little bit of convincing to get to function properly. Anyway, if you wanted to find out information regarding devices on your PCI bus, then the lspci command is a good command to use for that purpose. But what if that's not enough information? Well, we have another command that'll list hardware on your computer, and that command is lshw. This will give you quite a bit of information regarding your hardware, possibly more than you needed, but anything you might wanna know, it'll definitely have that information. Now at the bottom, it's telling me that information might be incomplete or inaccurate because I did not run this command with sudo. So in order to heed that, what I'll do is type sudo exclamation mark, exclamation mark, because what that does is it repeats the command that I've used most recently, which is lshw, but it'll prefix that command with sudo so I don't have to type the entire thing. Sure, lshw would have been only two more characters, but I wanted an excuse to give you this tip, and I thought that was a good excuse to do so. So, well, if you didn't know that, now you do. And we no longer get that warning at the bottom of the screen. But anyway, if I scroll up here, you're going to see even more information about the computer that I use to record footage on this channel. Probably more information than you ever wanted to know. I keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. There's just so much information here, but I'm pretty confident that anything you might want to know about your hardware can be discovered using this command. It's very powerful. And again, the command was lshw, and I used sudo in front of it because that's, well, required if you want to see all the information that it can possibly show you. But there is one option with this command that I definitely want to show off, and this is really, really cool. So what I'll do is add the dash HTML option. Now most commands that are longer than one character on the Linux command line will need two dashes, but this is a bit of an exception here because the dash HTML command just has a single dash. So that's not a typo, that's absolutely expected. Anyway, when I press enter, we see HTML. Well, I guess that makes sense considering that I used the dash HTML option, but what exactly are we going to do with this output? I mean, it's not like we have a web browser in our terminal. Well, there's actually a few web browsers that you could use within your terminal, but I'll save those for another video. But what we could do to make this even easier is we could simply redirect the output into a file. So what I'll do is redirect it into a file called hwinfo.html. And well, it seems to have worked. And in fact, we have the file right there. And let's open up a web browser and we'll open up the file. So in the case of Firefox, I could press Alt, and that reveals the file menu. And I'll just go to File, and then I'll click Open File. And here's the file right here. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. Now, how cool is this? From the command line, we were able to print HTML output from the lshw command. And this information right here might be valuable if you're troubleshooting something, or maybe you are working with someone who is troubleshooting something. If you want to compare your system with theirs, or perhaps attach this to a bug report. And if you did that, then this report would have all the information that a developer might need to help understand why something might not be working well on your computer. Now they'll probably have more information than they need, but I think everything they might need is covered here. And as you can see, it's a very useful command. Now there's another option that I would like to give you guys, and this next option will shorten the output. So if you felt like the output was overkill, there is actually a way to shorten the output. And you do that by adding the option dash short, like you see right here. 
Now I really like this option. I really like how everything is presented with this option. So if what you're looking for is within the output here, then this might even be the best option to go with. Either way, I've shown you a few different versions of output from this command, and you could choose whatever fits your use case. Now that's all well and good, but what if you wanted information just about your CPU? Well, for that, we have lscpu. And just like the name would suggest, this command gives you a lot of information regarding your CPU. So if you wanted to find out more about your CPU, then you could use this command. And from the output here, you can see, for example, that my footage PC contains an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core CPU. It's definitely a powerful CPU, I really love it. All in all, if you wanted to find more information regarding your computer's CPU, then the lscpu command is a great command that you could use to accomplish exactly that. Now all the commands that I've used so far have centered around USB, PCI devices, and your CPU, but what about storage? Well, for that, we have lsblk. Now depending on how long you've been working with Linux, or servers in general for that matter, you may or may not know about the term block storage. And the definition of that is pretty simple, and I'm going to oversimplify it. Block storage devices are, well, hard drives. If you think about your computer's hard drive or SSD, then those are block storage devices. So what the lsblk command enables us to do is list block storage devices. So I'll press enter, and there you go. Now we can ignore everything that has the word snap in it because that's not why we're here. That's not what we're looking for. When it comes to snapd, something that runs in the background that enables you to run snap packages, it creates quite a few loopback devices as you can see, but we're going to ignore those and we're going to focus on what's at the bottom where we have NVMe 0 and 1. And to the right of that, it has a type of disk. So we could tell right here that NVMe 0 and 1 is the name of the disk inside this computer. Below that, we have the same name three more times, but at the end of the name, we have P1, P2, and P3. And each one of those refers to a different partition. So your output might look a lot different than this. You might have something like SDA, that's very common. You might have something like VDA. Depending on what kind of disk you have in your computer or server, its naming convention might be different. But what you'll see across the board is you'll see a device name, and the type will be disk, and then underneath that, you'll have your partitions. And you'll know they're partitions because the type is part, as you can see to the right of each of those. And lsblk is yet another command that I like to use in combination with watch. But why? Well, think of it this way. Let's say you wanted to wipe a storage volume, and you wanted to make sure that you're wiping the correct one. It'd be very embarrassing if you overwritten the entire operating system of your computer or server when all you wanted to do was format and create a partition on an external storage device. So what you could do here is you could run lsblk with watch, which will show everything that's currently connected. And I haven't even plugged in a USB flash drive yet, which is what I'm about to do. And when I do that, you'll see a new device that'll be added to this list right here. And by comparing the output before and after I plug in a storage device, a flash drive, external hard drive, whatever it is, then we'll absolutely know which one of the items on this list pertains to that device, which will help make sure that we target the correct one. So I'll plug in a flash drive in three, two, one. And just like that, device SDA appeared. That was not there before. But the point is, I know exactly which one of these devices pertains to the device that I want to target, because SDA was not there before, it's there now, so that narrows it down immediately. And then when I remove it, of course, it goes away. And there you go. In this video, I gave you several hardware-related commands that you can enter on the Linux command line to inspect the underlying hardware when it comes to your instance. I hope this content was helpful, and if it was, please consider clicking that like button to let YouTube know how helpful this content was for you. And you never know, that might help Linux adoption all over YouTube. I think that'd be great. But if nothing else, let us know what you think about this video in the comments down below. Also subscribe, I have some great content that I'm adding to the series very soon. And I'll see you in the next video.